Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixine Publishing, and I'm spending another session with Adrian Nixon coming to us from Yorkshire, England, and we're going to be discussing graphene again. Adrian, welcome. How are you? We are going to talk about something important today, and that is single crystal graphene and why we need to know that it's important. So if you can tell us what, what's going on with that. Right. Well, you'll know there is, there's graphene and there's graphene. So this is graphene as a liquid, a dispersion. And then we've got uh, reduced graphene oxide powder. We've got that one there. Um, and then we've got uh, graphene, monolayer graphene on copper foil. So there is actually a layer of graphene on that metal surface there. And they're different types of graphene. You might think that was it, but the, there are subtleties at play here. Now, I want to really unpack this stuff in this video here. There's two different types of graphene. There's something called polycrystalline and something called single crystal graphene. And hopefully by the end of the, the time when we've stopped talking, or maybe we need, um, then you'll know the difference <laughs> and why it's important. So let me share my screen. So they're the two different types of graphene. They, we've got the powder over here, uh, or the liquids, that's where most of the commercial action is right now as we're talking in 2020. We, you've seen a lot of uh, us talk about a lot of things in videos about what that's doing. Now we'll start to see what this is doing. Now in a previous video you've seen this image so I won't spend too much time on it but you can see here there's a line going down. This is a sheet of copper foil and that's a scale bar there to give you an idea about the, uh, the size of what we're looking at. This strip here is the uh, underlying copper and then that line you can see there is the separation between ordinary copper and then a one atom thick layer of graphene covering the surface. I still, it still amazes me looking at this picture, Debbie. It's really cool, yeah. isn't it? It, it? it really is. And it's so perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the fact that you can actually see a one atom thick layer of graphene is staggering. Everybody thinks that the, the whole surface is covered in graphene. It is, but that is not single crystal graphene. And uh, that is very difficult to be made at the minute. We do know companies that are working on it, um, but nobody can make it commercially at scale yet. Let's just go back and just have a, a recap about how graphene is made. There's something called the chemical vapor deposition or CVD route. And we start off with a piece of blank copper foil or nickel usually. The graphene can grow from uh, several points. It's called snowflake deposition. It's a bit like um, the way snowflakes land on a, a pavement and then gradually the surface is covered by a single sheet. It's a bit like that. In this case, the carbon lands on the surface and then connects up in the lowest energy shape it can. And that is the hexagonal chicken wire shape that, that, that is graphene. But it starts growing from different points. And these, these points are called domains. And as the domains grow, they uh, ultimately collide. We'll look at the implication of that in the next slide. Also, there's another problem, which is the surface of the metal itself, no matter how much you try and polish it, when you look at it down on the microscopic level, you have these domains, these crystal domains. Now these are in the metal before you've even grown the graphene on the surface. Looks a bit like crazy paving. And when you grow graphene on the surface, then it can span some of these little gaps and it can't span others. So you, you end up with um, some of this graining pattern being copied through onto the uh, surface. So uh, graphene as polycrystalline form will actually look something a little bit like this, where you've got all these different domains with these lines going through here. Where those lines uh, exist, they form defects which weaken the strength of the graphene. And you can see in more detail here, on this part here, you can see this is where one domain has been growing of graphene. And this part here with the blue lines is where another one has been growing. And you see these carbons with the red lines here, Debbie. That's where the two domains have met. And can you see there's a discontinuity there? Yes, it's not the perfect pattern like it is um, on the on either side when it starts trying to connect together it loses that shape yeah and and these these bonds here they're, they're strained a little bit and they're they're not quite as um uh, rigorous and as strong as normal graphene so these are these are weaker and also you'll get vacancies that is holes in the sheet if you remember previously we've talked about the TERS technique where you've got um, where you functionalize graphene too much you get holes in the basal plane and that weakens the strength of the graphene. It's even more critical here when you're dealing with graphene, pure graphene sheet, that um, 
has holes in it, the more holes you've got, the weaker it is. Single crystal graphene here is that perfect repeating pattern. And when we uh, talk about crystals in this context, we're talking about a repeating pattern rather than something which is very rigid and flexible and shatters on impact. Graphene's not like that. It can still be a crystal, but quite bendy and floppy. But it is the ultimate material. That's the stuff that would be 200 times stronger than steel, make the best material for electronics, make the best material for a whole host of applications, right up and including the space elevator. That's what single crystal graphene is. That's why it's so important. At the moment, polycrystalline graphene is where most of the action is. There are companies working on making this single crystal graphene, and we'll start hearing about it in the future. Uh, and when that comes out in commercial form, that's just going to change our lives. Well, because it has, it sounds like it has all the superlatives then with the single crystal graphene. Exactly, yeah. yes. That's, that's when you get the true power of everything that graphene is and can do. That is uh, encapsulated in single crystal graphene. Polycrystalline graphene is a weaker cousin but everybody just calls it graphene at the moment because that's where things are evolving. But as we start getting into this, people need to understand the nuance between the two things and why polycrystalline, polycrystalline and single crystal graphene is important. It's, it's, a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> it, is. it is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can see in the diagram um, very clearly how the pattern is completely different in, in the other vet as opposed to the, the single crystal, is so perfect. It's just yeah. a perfect sheet. It's a perfect pattern, which, is, you know, which contains the strength and all the electronic properties, all the optical properties, everything. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense for the strength. That just, you know, because there aren't any vacancies or anything else like that. Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate your time today. And uh, as, as always, uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you in our next video. Oh, for anybody who has any questions or comments, please leave those, you, you know, right in so that we can uh, uh, chat with you about whatever you have. All right. Thanks so much. See you next Bye. time.